Hey kids, welcome. Now I did get started with a little bit of drawing. You can start while we get going with the video. If you want to welcome, uh, invite somebody, please do. Let, let, let us know, let your, your parents know, ask them to share the video. I'm glad you're back with me. I hope you have something to color with. I hope you have colored pencils, crayons, uh, something like that. Take a minute, please, and share the video so that other kids can join in, all right? We're gonna continue our story through the book of Exodus in just a minute. You can go ahead and begin to draw. This is Moses, and we've got the nation of Israel behind him, and we're gonna hear a very interesting story that helps us start to see which way Israel is headed as they wander through the desert, all right? Okay, hopefully you've signed, you've shared it by now. I am glad you're here. I really love doing this with you, and uh, I hope you're learning about God's Word. Now, last time we heard, the whole community of Israel was singing, and then they were complaining, right? They were celebrating the fact that God crushed the enemies of Israel, but also that he was loving and leading his people. And then right after that, they started to go, does he love us? Is he going to provide for us? Is he going to care for us? And God said, Yes, you need to listen to me. You need to follow me. You need to, to care, trust in me, and I will provide for you. Well, here's what chapter 16 tells us. The whole Israel, Israelite community began to walk from, from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, is what the name of the desert is called. And in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there, was, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Now, you know, probably, if you know anything about a desert, kids, you know that there isn't much food in the desert. I get it. You get it. You look around, nothing but sand. And I don't know if you've ever tried to eat sand, but it's crunchy, and it doesn't taste good, and it doesn't have any nutritional value. So on one side, we might know, wow, there's a huge group of people. Where are they going to get some food? You guys probably ask your parents 10 million times a day, hey, can I have a snack? Can I have some food? And then when they provide you food, often here's what you do. I don't like it. Well, you sound a lot like the children of Israel. Okay? Asking for food, not liking what God provides. And here they're complaining, and that's why I used the lightning bolt exclamation point, just like Pharaoh was complaining against God. Well, here, the children of Israel, they've got the same language as Egypt, grumbling against God. But here's what God says. I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they follow in my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. In the evening, you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord because he heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses said. All right, so Moses is telling them this. The Lord is going to bring and provide for the people. And actually, what he says is, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring quail. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring bread. The quail that evening comes, and they say, look, look at verse 13. That evening, quail came and covered the camp. In the morning, there was a layer of dew on the camp, all right? So first, we'll read about the, the quail again, I think, in the book of Numbers. But quail, do you know what quail is? Quail is like a little bird. I've seen them out, in, out west. And uh, so they look like this, okay? We're going to put a, a little bird. They kind of got they kind of got a little head and a little body like that. And you know what they do? They have a little pharaoh, they have a little pharaoh thing on them too. So I'm not going to draw a bunch of those, but you can draw a few with a little 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 quail all over. So God provides them with meat, and then he provides them with with, with something else, which is going to be kind of the symbol of all of God's provision for many years. First, he provides quail. 
So they can go out and they kill those birds and they can eat those birds. But then it tells us that in the morning, there was a, a layer of dew around the camp. And when the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. And when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. And it, the, Moses told them, it's bread for you to, the Lord has given you to eat. And this is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. All right. Then they went out. And they, so, they, so here's what they see, kids. They see this like, I'm going to make these little things. All right. And they're like little cakes. You know how you have like a frosted flakes? Have any of you had frosted flakes? I don't know that manna looked like frosted flakes, but it looks like thin, light cakes that are all over the ground, and God's people can go and gather them up and take them to eat. And it says in, in God's word here that everyone had as much as they needed. And God gave them a couple instructions. And these instructions were designed to teach them to follow his loving and his leading. God said that they would go out every day, and that they would save up or gather up the manna. That's what it's called, manna, this bread. Gather up the manna so that they would have enough to eat from the Lord. But they weren't supposed to save up manna, okay? Because the manna that was saved up, what Moses tells them that you're not supposed to keep it until morning. But some of them did, and it began to stink and rot. And I think God was helping them to learn to depend on him each day. In fact, he says, hey, don't keep any extra. Just get all that you need. God provided plenty for them to eat, but he wanted them to depend on him, right? And even then, there's one extra way that he shows this. And this is a big part of what God does in the life of Israel for the future. He says, on the sixth day, you're supposed to gather twice as much. And even though on the other days, when you gathered up, it, the, the food began, the manna began to rot in the morning and smell and stink and it was, had bugs. On the sixth day, you're supposed to gather two days worth because on the seventh day, you're supposed to rest just as God rested in creating the world. On the seventh day, you're supposed to rest and you're supposed to rest in a way that trusts God. So, so you're not going to go out and pick up manna in the morning. You're going to trust God because I'm going to keep that food from spoiling and I'm going to provide for you even when you go out. He, the Lord says this, tomorrow is to be a day of Sabbath rest, a rest for you, a holy Sabbath. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. See, save whatever is left and keep it until morning. And when they woke up in the morning on the seventh day, Saturday, it didn't stink because the Lord had prepared and provided. And he said, six days you're supposed to gather, but on the seventh day you are to rest. And you know what? There were still some people, just like some people didn't listen when God said, don't take, too much, don't take stuff that you're going to save overnight, and then it spoiled. They didn't listen. And then on the seventh day, you know what happened? They went out there anyway to look, and there was no manna. God had not provided the manna, but they also had revealed their hard hearts that they didn't want to listen to God. God was being a good king, right? What was God doing? What he's always done, kids, remember? They had grumbled, and what was God's sign that he had given? I will bless you. And he had provided quail. He had provided manna, and he had given it to them to provide food for them, and he called them to listen to his loving, leading, and care for them, and yet they would not listen. This manna, which is a word that means, like, what is it? I don't know what it is. That's what, that's what the word means. Like, if you named your bread, I don't know, right? And that's what they named it. And they took it as a sign of God's providing for them that the children of Israel kept for the rest of their time to show that when they were in need, even when they didn't, they grumbled against the Lord. God said, I'm going to bless you and provide for you. He brought quail and meat, and he brought manna. But even when he provided, he called them to trust him, to depend on him. 
God calls us to depend on him each day, to rest in him in our work. Not to think that we provide for ourselves, that we feed ourselves, that we make ourselves strong. Kids, all of you, just the children of Israel are supposed to go out every day, six days a week, and gather up that food. And you're supposed to be a hard worker. You need to get up and work hard every day with the, with the energy God gives you at school and in all the things you do, you're supposed to work hard. But don't ever forget what Israel was forgetting. God is the one who provides us with energy, with life, with strength each day. That when we work and in our work, we're supposed to depend on him, listen to him, follow his loving leading. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow, guys.